The worst thing about moss poles is that you have to water them. I just watered you two days ago and you're so dry. And if you live in a country with low ambient humidity, you're going to be watering them every other day. I'm putting an end to this. I have this self wicking cord wrapped around the moss inside the cup and then it's strung upwards through the moss. It'll wick up all of the moisture that it needs and, oh, oh, gravity. Again, with the gravity. This turned out really badly. New plan, new plant. Now that we know we need to work with gravity, we have to rig something that is on top of this moss pole. So let's work with a water bottle. This is going to be a slight modification of Sydney Plant Guy's idea to cut a hole in the water bottle, but this time the top is completely open. My self wicking string will sit inside the water bottle and then the rest of the string will go down through the moss pole. The more I think about this, the more worried I am. I don't think that the moss pole and the plant is just going to take what it needs. I honestly think that it's going to take all of the water out of the system as fast as it possibly can and then just dump it into the system of the plant. But how long is that gonna take? A couple hours, 24 hours? Am I just going to have to resort to knowing exactly how much to fill this bottle by? We'll keep an eye on it, pray it doesn't fall over, and we'll really have to think, is this just as effective as cutting a small hole in this water bottle and letting it slowly drip through? We'll have to wait and see. After about 10 hours or so, the water reservoir is almost completely empty, the moss is soaking wet, and it started to pool in the bottom of the pot. Again. Although this didn't really work, we are getting closer to a perfectly self-watering moss pole. It could just be a matter of figuring out exactly how much water to put in this reservoir so it completely waters the moss pole and doesn't have it pooling in the bottom of the pot. Now you might be thinking, Lee, they already have self-watering moss poles. Why don't you just go buy one or make one yourself? But honestly, I don't think they ever worked. Emma from Good Growing tried to make one about a year ago, but she seemed to be running into the exact same problems that we're facing right now. While she was consistently filling up her self-watering moss poles, as you can see, all of the moss is still bone dry. Again, there's the issue of gravity. The water reservoir seems to need to be above the moss pole in order for it to pull enough water into the self-watering wick to water things more evenly. So you have the problem with standing water sitting at the bottom of your self-watering moss pole, very little water getting wicked up, and of course, mold. Lots and lots of mold. If something is consistently wet, mold might be inevitable. Dave from Aeroid District made these self-watering moss poles and he noticed two main things. The longer the string, the less effective the wicking is. And if the moss dries out completely, you have to prime your moss pole again by manually saturating it. Extremely dry moss does have the habit of repelling water, so I can see how these issues can work together to make self-watering moss poles such a challenge. So I think our main goal here is to find a system that's self-automated enough so that you're not watering every day or every other day, something that doesn't consistently keep the moss wet 100% of the time, and something that allows a little bit of a wet and dry cycle. You can probably tell I'm getting pretty desperate because I bought these absurd plant IV bags off of AliExpress. There were about $5 for six of them, but if you're lucky, you could find some drop shipper selling one of them for $7 each. Now, after I threw away all the ones that were leaking and broken, they hold 350 milliliters of water each. The idea is to hang it upside down, water drips through, passes through this limiter, and comes out of this stake. This limiter is supposed to control how many milliliters of water comes out per hour, but if you can't even get the seal on the bag right, I really don't have much faith in this. If the system is accurate, I'll set the limiter at about 15 milliliters per hour, and then it should take around 24 hours to completely drain from the system. I'm maxing out the settings on this one at 250 milliliters an hour to see how accurate it actually is. An hour later, I come back to the 15 milliliter per hour looking like this. No water into the plant, of course, but yes, let's ruin my table. The 250 milliliters per hour that should have almost emptied this container is practically still full. I thought these parts here going horizontally might be the issue, but off camera, I did move them so that they were going vertical, but there seems to be no difference. So if you bought these plant IV bags, I'm sorry, you're not getting your money back. So maybe the answer is to go high tech. I bought this automatic drip irrigation system off of Amazon. It had pretty decent reviews and the two main things it's supposed to do is control how much water it outputs and control the frequency in which it spits out the water. It came with these spikes that are supposed to help it drip slowly into whatever medium you're using, but as you can probably tell, it restricts flow so much that I'll probably not end up using these. 
With these splitters, it's supposed to split out the flow evenly into two or multiple containers, but as you can tell, it's not really working as intended. If it's not going to work for two, it's probably not going to work with more. So after putting the tube at the top of the moss, it seems to be working as intended. I did notice that the first time I used it, when the moss was on the more dry side, it did repel a lot of the water. After the fact, the moss is pretty evenly moist, however, a lot of the water did go straight into the pot. So if I were to use this system, I'd have to use it on a single moss pull, and I would have to make sure that my pot has good drainage. I'll set it to take 40 milliliters of water every two days and spit it out into the moss pull and see if this is a good schedule and then from there I can make some minor adjustments and hopefully this might be a solution to my problem. Things were going fine for the first few weeks. The moss was staying pretty evenly moist but the second that we had our very first heat wave, everything went out the window. After three days with weather like this, the moss had dried out completely. Now every time the pump would water, it would go on the outside of the moss directly into the pot. What has worked for me is to get a plastic back for your moss pull like my design or like Nora the Lekka Queen's design. When less moss is exposed to open air, it seems to retain water for longer. Instead of just using sphagnum moss, you can use a mix of tree fern fiber and sphagnum moss. This works better because the tree fern fiber isn't hydrophobic when dry. Since I've been using tree fern fiber, it stays much more evenly wet. A mix of about 60% moss and 40% tree fern fiber has been working well for me. You can continue to use Sydney the Plant Guy's water bottle idea, but personally I prefer using a pump action spray bottle. It just seems to saturate the moss faster. Remember, you don't need a moss pole for your plants for larger growth. Any stick or stake will do fine. While moss poles do have their benefits, the amount of work that it takes to maintain them may not be worth the slightly larger growth than you can get when compared to a stick or a stake. Here's how you make my moss pole. 